Hi, welcome back to the Solutions Manual. In this video, we will solve the problem 8-7 from R.C. Hippaler Engineering Statics 12th edition. According to this problem, the uniform thin pole has a weight of 30 lb and a length of 26 feet. If it is placed against the smooth wall and on the rough floor in the position where B is 10 feet, will it remain in this position when it is released? The coefficient of static friction is given as 0.3. So we have to figure out whether there is sufficient friction to keep this pole in this position against the wall. Now to solve this problem, first of all, we have to consider this condition. That is, if the pole has to remain stationary, It means no slipping. Then the pole has to satisfy this condition. Which is the frictional force at the point A on the rough floor should be less than or equals to the maximum frictional force at the point A. And we know that we can also write this statement as Fa frictional force at the floor at point A should be less than or equals to mu s times Na. So we have to prove this condition. If there is sufficient friction to keep this pole in this position, where the pole remains stationary against the wall. Now, to solve this problem, first of all, we have to draw the free body diagram. At the point B, because the point B is the smooth wall, so I just have a normal reaction at the point B. The point A is a rough floor, so I have a normal reaction as well as the frictional force. But what should be the direction of the friction force? We can sense it that if the pole does not remain stationary and it is it falls because of the insufficient friction, then the lower part of the pole will move in this direction. The force of friction at point A should be in the opposite direction of the motion. We have one more force, which is the weight of this pole, which is 30 lb. And since it's uniform, so the center of gravity will be in the middle of this 26 feet. Now, let's label each of the forces. So this right here is the NB. Let's call this NA. And this is our frictional force from the floor. Let's call this FA. And this right here is the 30 lb force. Now we can apply our equilibrium equations. So our first equation for Na would be summation of forces in y direction equals to zero. I am considering up direction as positive. So we have Na minus 30 lb equals to zero. So from here, Na comes out to be 30 lb. Now for NB, because we have to use the NB in the calculation of the force at A. So for NB, summation of moments at point A equals to zero. I'm considering counterclockwise direction as positive. So FA and NA have their line of actions directed through the point A. So they will not produce any moment about point A because they don't have any moment on. So FA and NA will not produce any moment about point A. This 30 LB force is trying to rotate the pole in counterclockwise direction about point A. So the moment produced by this 30 LB force will be taken as positive. For the moment arm, if I extend this 30 LB force,
then this perpendicular distance is the momentum for the 30 LP force. Let's call this X and also the NB force is trying to rotate the pole in clockwise direction about point A. So the moment produced by this NB force will be taken as negative. So negative NB and the moment arm is this perpendicular distance. Let's call this y equals to 0. So now we have to calculate the values of x and y. For x, we can use the equivalent triangles. If I draw the figure separately. We know that the weight is acting at the middle of this uniform pole. So this distance is 13 feet. Which is same as this distance here. And the length of this pole is 26 feet. This right here is 26 feet. This is 13 feet. And the base of the larger triangle is given as the distance t and the smaller triangle has a base of x which we have to find out. The d is 10 feet, so this right here is d which is 10 feet and the base of the smaller triangle is x that we have to find out. So now we can use the ratios of their lengths. So 26 feet divided by the base which is 10 for the larger triangle equals to 13 feet which is the hypotenuse for the smaller triangle divided by its base which is x so from here x comes out to be 5 feet and now for y for y we just have to consider the larger triangle because the height of the larger triangle is y y feet so we can use the Pythagoras theorem here. So we have the hypotenuse square for the larger triangle equals to the opposite square, which is the y plus the base square, which is the distance 10 feet. So from here, y comes out to be 24 feet. So these are the values for x and y. We can substitute it in our moment's equation. So our moment's equation becomes 30 into x, which is 5 feet, minus nb into y, which is 24 feet, equals to 0. So from here, nb comes out to be 6.25 lbs. For fa, I can do summation of forces in x direction equals to 0. I am considering the right hand side as positive. So we have nb minus fa equals to 0. So from here, fa is equals to nb, which is equals to 6.25 lbs. So this is the value of the frictional force acting on the pole exerted by the flow. Now we have to verify this statement as well. So Fa has to be less than or equals to mu s times Na. So Fa which is 6.25 has to be less than or equals to the product of the coefficient of static friction which is 0 0.3 and the Na force, which is the normal reaction from the floor at point A, which is 30 LPs. So 0 0.3 times 30. So 6.25 is less than 9, which means Fa is less than Fa max. It means the inequality proves to be true. And our initial condition 
has been verified. So our conclusion would be, yes, the pole will remain stationary because of the presence of sufficient friction. So this is it for this problem. I hope you will find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. And if you have any questions or any doubts, then feel free to ask in the comment section and I will answer it as soon as possible. To increase your understanding of the Hibala friction problems, check out this video. Thank you.